like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, like the circles that you find in the windmills of your Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is, of course, our debonair ideal segment <clears throat> for this evening. Well, do you have, uh, <coughs> excuse me, debonair news? Um... No, no. I mean, Phil Zengi just obviously he just completed a uh, tour of California, and I know when we had him on the show, the the the, the four year anniversary yeah. show, they're getting ready to hit. Um, it sounds like Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm hoping if my schedule will allow it, I can I can possibly get sync there, up. Yeah. To get, you know, Atlanta's not a far trip, um, and I have not been to a Phil Zengi event, so I really want to go to one. So once we have some of the details of that, um. Stay tuned. We'll get it out to folks on Stogie Geeks. I know, I know we have a lot of listeners in Atlanta, um, and I think when, you know, and I'm going to be talking about Indian, one of the Indian motorcycle cigars, and and all I got to say is Phil Zengi did it again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, good thing is we review these cigars, and folks really like them. Absolutely. So, so uh, Will, yeah. what did you think about your Arturo Fuente Destino Al Siglo Grand Anniversario de Amor Perfecto? Um, I'm putting the Oasis rating on it. <clears throat> Me too. Um, this is this may be one of the greatest Fuentes I've had. It's unbelievable, right? Yeah, the sweetness of this thing. Um, you get a little bit of that cinnamon kind of. It's a yes. It's a cinnamon. Yeah, there's a cinnamon. Yeah, there's a definite cinnamon sweetness you're getting off that cinnamon sweet spice. However you want to call. It. Yes. And and I was wondering if it was a rapper playing tricks on my mind again, but you know I wasn't really looking at the rapper as I was smoking this, so. Um, yeah, and and it it does produce ample smoke. I love the way this box press is drawing too. <clears throat> yeah, the draw and the burn and the smoke production are like spot on. The yeah. draw is effortless, but it doesn't burn hot, and that is the quality. Some of the qualities that uh, we like to put in the Oasis rating. So the the way these are working, I mean, from what I understand, they they just come out every so often. They're going to come out. Yes. They're not, so it's kind of one of those things I think you're going to want to just keep an eye when Fuente is shipping these things. Absolutely. You know, I'll make a comment. We, we talked about the price tag on this. And yes, this is one of these cigars. I mean, there are some $20 cigars out there that I'm going to be honest, shouldn't be $20 cigars. Mm-hmm. This one, I have no qualms. It's like, you know, I put this right up there with some of the limited Davidoffs and stuff. I have no qualms yeah, about limited this Davidoffs, limited Padrones. And this is definitely in that category. Yeah, I mean, this is a very – and I bell the ball as far as the Destiny El Sigo blend goes. Now, I just lit up another – since we're on a Fuente kick, um, I lit up uh, an Opus X Angel share in the Grand Corona size. Mm-hmm. And this is another um, – this might be fuck, fight, <laughs> fight Chuck Norris. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, and uh, it's good in the Robusto huh. size as well as the <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, there's so one for the blue wheel. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Um, yes, this is, that's a different rating, actually. Um, but this is the uh, Angel Share Grand Corona. It's awesome. You know, I was actually, as I was playing with Dojo's app, I actually was thinking of this Destiny of Siglo and how many cigars this beat as... Right. And I and I and I, I love what he did with that. By the way, I think it's a it's something oh, very it's different. Uh, I wish I thought of it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, so this one I was just putting head to head against a lot of cigars, and it was beating it. So I kind of had that in the back of my mind too. So, Will, are you ready to learn and get quizzed on Corojo? Yeah, let's there's do a, it. a deep, rich history in the the Corojo uh, plant, and we'll uh, explore it all inside of these uh, ten questions that I have for you. So you're okay. Ready? Yep. The original Corojo tobacco plants were prone to disease, 
including this color mold? Is it A, white, B, blue, C, black, or D, green? That's a tricky question. I'm going to say blue. Yes, it is, in fact, yeah. blue mold. Yeah. Named after its birthplace, the farm Santa Inez del Corojo in the Vuelta Abajo region, the Corojo plant is derived from which other tobacco strain? Is it A, Corojo 99, B, Sumatra, C, Criollo, or D, Connecticut? C. It is, in fact, C. The Corojo plant was derived from Criollo seeds, uh, which they did the, uh, the hybrid thing, okay. which you can read online on, like, how you do that. There's actually a tutorial to tell you how to, like, crossbreed tomato plants and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to get some experts on the talk about that because I am by no means a botanist. But there is a lot of that uh, science behind uh, some of that, especially when you cross-pollinate and cross-breed uh, these plants. But it did come from the Criollo uh, seed. One of the early hybrids of the original Corojo, speaking of hybrids, to gain popularity was called what? Was it A, Havana 2000, B, Corojo 99, C, Corojo 97, or D, Corojo 2000? Repeat A again. Havana 2000. B. It is, in fact, B. Corojo 99 was the first strain that was actually crossbred to counteract um, the disease-prone <coughs> original Corojo strains that were prone to that blue mold. Connecticut plants yield approximately 90%, Criollo 98 about 80%, and the Corojo plants yield this percentage of wrapper leaves. Is it A, 40%? B, 60%, C, 70%, or D, 80%? D. It is A, 40%. That really? Was of, that was one of the problems with the original Corojo. I thought uh, they grew Corojo for wrapper, though. They do, and it only yields, according to Christian oh, Arroyo, okay. it only yielded uh, 40%. Good, good one. Yep. Uh, Christian Aroa, speaking of Christian Aroa, used Corojo as a wrapper in the Camacho Corojo and... This other line, is it A, the Diploma 07 slash 05, B, the Diploma 1118, C, the Liberty Series, or D, all of the above, or E, none of the above? D. It is D, all of the above. Camacho Liberty uh, 2012 uh, had a Corojo wrapper, according to yep. my research. Yep. Cigar manufacturer Hoya de Nicaragua used a Corojo wrapper in this line. Is it A, Antonio 1970, B, Antonio Dark Corojo, C, Hoya Red, or D, Cuatro Cinco? Uh, B, the Dark Corojo. That is correct. That was kind of an obvious one, but yeah, obviously it's, it's a darker Corojo mm -hmm. wrapper. Uh, praised highly on the Stogie Geek show, Kusano made this limited production Corojo wrapped cigar. Is it A, the Kusano 18 Connecticut? B, the Kusano 10th anniversary? C, the vintage 1997 torpedo? Or D, the Kusano M1? Ooh. This is the tricky one. I had to repeat. Deep in the Stogie Geeks archives for this one, Will. Repeat, repeat those answers again. Sure. Cusano 18, Connecticut. Cusano 10th anniversary. The vintage 1997 Torpedo or the Cusano M1? The 18. Cusano 18, Connecticut, A is yeah. your answer. That is incorrect. Mm -hmm. It is the Cusano Corojo vintage 1997 Torpedo. Oh, I'm thinking. I know there's a corrupt. I know there's yeah, an 18 it was, it was a limited run. It's yeah. very instilled in the Stogie Santa. Uh, finding some in the back, and then when I smoked it, it's actually wow. a really awesome cigar that I, I don't believe is made anymore, and could only be found in some gift sets or like limited runs. It was uh, yeah, kind of one of those uh, obscure cigar references. Yeah, good one. Corojo seeds were smuggled out of Cuba in these. Is it A 
underwear and socks. B, belts and shoes. C, noses and ears. Or D, handbags and wallets. Oh, boy. Let's repeat them one more time. Underwear and socks, belts and shoes, noses and ears, or handbags and wallets. D. D, handbags and wallets is incorrect. It is belts and shoes. How did I get them in a belt? I th- Well, you know, I have a belt that has like a zipper in it. Okay. Yeah, so you can like put stuff in the, the shoes. In the I was like, yeah, I, I thought I heard the shoes. And was, what, yeah. I, the, yeah. I do have references for all of these questions. Of course, Story Geeks okay. listeners are more than welcome to uh, to correct us, yeah. um, especially those you know working in the industry or um, or what have you. But uh, yeah, I, I I will post the uh, the references. Yeah. Kind of like questions. when these questions have run their course. So. Good questions. <clears throat> A name for another disease typically contracted by the original Corojo plants. Is it A, Black Death, B, Blue Shank, C, Black Shank, or D, Prison Shank? C, Black Shank. It is Black Shank is the other disease contracted by the original Corojo plants. <clears throat> According to Tobacco and University, the lowest priming of the Corojo plant is <clears throat> A, Corona, B, Uno y Medio, C, Libre de Pi, or D, Volado. Probably oh, butchering, shoot, yeah, butchering the pronunciation, but different. there are different primings for the Corojo plant. We're looking for the lowest priming. Libre de Pi, C. That is correct. Very good, Will. Yeah, I remember Corojo has a different scheme yes the it does. yo-yo one's the more common one common that's... one right yeah yes yeah, so you scored a 70 percent well you did really well i'm impressed those are hard those are not easy questions those are very difficult questions i thought it was <laughs> important job. to explore that was the... a lot of fun that yeah was a lot of... it was important to explore the corojo plant i mean we've talked yeah. about it a lot we interviewed christian aroa that's a good reference for more information on corojo as well so uh certainly one of those ones that are uh really ingrained in the uh tobacco history uh, of course, they did a lot of uh, crossbreeding and in, in hi- making hybrids from the original Corojo to kind of like that blue mold, uh, the black shank, and um, Camacho, of course, being the, the shining example of uh, Corojo wrapped cigars. Of course, there are a lot of other manufacturers, in addition to the ones that I mentioned, that also use Corojo wrappers. Although now, from what I read, many of the, cor- like what people call Corojo today, a lot of them have been so far from the genetic material from the original Corojo that they're like not even Corojo anymore. Uh, so I think Hanky Kellner is uh, actually quoted in one of the articles that I'll link to uh, in, in saying that, the, you know, genetically their to ones today are so far from it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. It's good. And it's helping me study for my tobacco in university. <clears throat> certainly. By the way, um, next week, Stogie Geeks, we will have Jorge from Tobacco Nest University on. That's going to be a fun conversation. It's good yeah, timing. So, yeah. So, I mean, we're we're really getting serious, Paul and I, about this Tobacco Nest University, learning a lot about it. And I think the best part about, you know, as you learn, you know, as you share information with people, you're learning, too. So, Absolutely. So we encourage Stogie. We'll give you a lot of information if you're interested in doing this because consumers can get certified. We're doing it as consumers. Now, I probably won't ask him the questions because that, that would be unfair to everyone else. No, no. Nah, nah. <laughs> he probably literally wrote, wrote the book on it. Yep. So. <clears throat> awesome. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back and talk about our Stogies of the Week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 